Hello and welcome to Saki Tech. So in today's video, I will be going over more data types in our C++ programming tutorial series. This will be tutorial number six, and I do recommend that you go and watch the previous tutorials so you can understand this one better. Uh, so let's get to business. More data types in C++. Now in tutorial number four, we already talked about variables and uh, two basic data types integer and double so you already know you should already know how to declare a variable and then we're gonna go over a total of four data types today including integer and double I just have to make some additions to those two as well so the first data type as you know is integer this is a very basic data type and you can assign to this kind of data type uh, whole numbers like one two three five million three hundred now the reason I'm going going over this uh, integer data type is because there is a limit there is a maximum and a minimum number you can assign to an integer variable so for example you cannot assign a number of this scope to an integer because the maximum range you can assign is actually a weird number let me uh, do a copy and paste so let's uh, put a little comment here range there you go so that is the you can that is the range of numbers you can assign to an integer variable this is a number over 2 trillion but you cannot assign 2.5 trillion or 3 trillion to an integer variable you can either do a negative value or you can do a positive value okay so if you go beyond this number you can use the double type which we already went over okay but remember with double you can actually assign numbers like 25.5 100.25 and all kinds of fractional numbers and you know you can also assign normal integer numbers when I see integer numbers I mean uh, whole numbers like you know five to a double so you can use double for both so the range of values they can assign to a double variable is this so how you read this is this is 1.7 and then you can add 308 trailing zeros to this so that's going to be a long number. So it's 1.7, and starting at the point, you can add 308 trailing zeros. You can have a negative number or a positive number of that size assigned to a double variable. So you're, you can be pretty sure that you can handle pretty much any number with double. Okay, so the next data type I want to go over is the character data type. So you already know how to print numbers on the screen, onto the console. What if you wanted to print a single character on the screen? What you have to do is to declare a variable of type character and assign a single character to that variable. So let's take a look at that. So that's the uh, the character data type it's C H A R okay so character one so what happened here was character one is a variable of type character or let's just say care and uh, if you wanna assign a single character to this like A B C D or anything like that you would go is equal I mean not equal assigned A okay so now the character a has been assigned to the variable character one you can also actually assign the character one to character one so this is actually a character not the number one but the character one so you cannot add you cannot say character plus character one plus five is equal to six it's not going to give you a valid number um, so that's how you do single characters a you can do a capital a you can do a z capital z and just remember we're talking about a single character 
not a word or not a sentence just a single character okay so let's uh, put this here and let's execute this code real quick I'm gonna print that on the screen so character one and I'm gonna put two new lines here and we learned all about this in the previous modules okay so this whole thing we talked about in the previous modules so let's save this and do a build and run what's gonna print on the screen is a right here okay so that is character one and remember you have to put the characters in single quotation marks to make sure it's a character now there's one more thing you need to know about characters every single character has a corresponding number associated with it and that's called the ASCII table it's ASCII -I. you can go to Google in fact let's go right now okay and um, let's put this right here ASCII table um, click that okay so let's uh, look for the character a okay here's the the lowercase a right here so what is the corresponding number that that that, that equates to uh, the character a let me see so we're looking at the decimal the decimal is right here 97 so let me show you exactly what I mean here if I say declare a character two variable of type character and assign the value 97 to it okay and then I go and try to print this to actually, let's do a save build and run okay what's gonna print again is a okay even though I assigned the decimal value 97 to the variable character 2 what printed was a because the character 2 is of type character and every character has a corresponding decimal value okay make sure you understand that when you assign the number 97 to a to a variable that is of type character what's gonna print is the corresponding character which is a if we go back to that table and we wanted to print D we would assign a hundred so if we do a hundred save build and run we printed a D which is in fact the corresponding number for D in the ASCII table okay so this is not something you memorize these are things you have to go and look it up um, and just to clarify one last thing uh, if you assign this number 100 to number 1 here and then you go and you print that it's obviously going to print 100 because that's it of type integer that holds integer values this holds characters every character has a corresponding decimal value and you get that decimal value from the ASCII table okay that's very simple so let's just put some comments here refer to the ASCII table for all characters and their corresponding values okay so the final data type we're going to be talking about in this module is the boolean data type this is a logical data type and let's just name a random let's give a random name to the variable I'm gonna declare so I just declared the variable choice and it's of type boolean boolean data type can only hold two values either true or false false represented by a number is zero and true is any other number okay so uh, the boolean data type data data type stores either true or false and so if you wanted the choice to be false you would just say false okay this is a reserved keyword in C++ just like everything else here the integer is a reserved keyword double is a reserved keyword so is false and false 
represents the number zero. So this would be just as good. Choice would be false. So you can either do false, okay? Let's do one more, boolean choice two, or you can do true. And if you were to assign a number here like 1000, that would evaluate to true anyway, or even 10, and even minus 10. Anything but zero would be true. Okay, so that is a true right there. So you got two choices. You got false and true, and I cannot, unfortunately, give you an example right now. I will, however, do that once we come to decision making in C++ using if and else statements. Okay, well, that brings us to the end of this video. Thank you very much for watching. If you have any questions, put them down in the comment section. Subscribe to my channel for more videos to come. And uh, click the like button if you like this video. And, uh, you know, just uh, I'm going to be uploading some more videos very, very soon in C++ programming tutorial series. So just uh, be on the lookout for those. Thank you very much for watching. Have a good day, guys.